Hi, this is Sergeant Beast Larson. Dressed up today, I just finished making a PowerPoint for Special Operations Director about manipulation. Uh, the last video. This video today, I want to talk about contact and cover. Contact and cover officers. Your roles, what you need to do, and some, some thoughts and considerations. And this video is dedicated to Frank way out there in Arizona. Frank, it's a good chatting with you all the time, and we've got some more topics coming up too. Contact and cover. Start over here, fence. In a prison, a jail institution. Put an S here for the suspect. Contact officer is going to be the officer right here, but OFF. You got somebody against the wall. A contact officer is the one making contact. He's talked to him, he's addressed him, he's put him on the wall, whatever, he's going to pat him down, search him. If that's his intention. So the contact officer is the one that handles verbally and physically control of that situation. The cover officer, depending on which side he's doing, the cover officer needs to be over here or over here. Okay, and this is going to change. You see I'm pointing over here, two different spots. I'll zoom in a little bit and have a picture of this when we get done. If the suspect is here, and the cover officer here is talking to him. If he wants to pat him down, remember searches are systematic. I always start searching on the right side. So you're going to tell the inmate to turn your head to the left. So he's got his head to the left because you don't want him watching your cover, which means your cover needs to be standing over here to the right. You need to stand close enough you can react, but not too close to be in the way. So if you're the cover officer, you're standing back, okay? Stand back about a 45 degree angle, whatever, but you need to be in a good position to watch all of the inmates' movement head to toe and the officer. Now, your job is nonverbal. You're there as the backup. Sometimes, you know, there's a good cop, bad cop. I'll talk about that in a minute. But in a search situation, whoever the, the officer is that's putting hands on the inmate and patting them down, shoulders, you know, head and neck, down the arm, down the waist, the legs. He's been and doing all this. The cover guy needs to be standing off to the side and watch it. Once you're done searching, inmates looking to the left like this, he searches the whole right side. Inmate, turn your head to the right. Cover officer, you're not standing there with your hands in your pockets. You're not standing there playing with a tie if you got a tie on, messing with your shirt. You're not trying to do all this to look good. You're standing in an interview position. One foot slightly in front of the other, feet shoulder width apart, your fighting stance. Hands are not like this. They're not up here. You're not like, hey man, is this done yet? You're not on a cell phone if you got a cell phone and you're important. You're not anything. 100% attention to the suspect, the inmate, whoever it is, and the officer that's making that contact with him, patent and searching him. Okay? And listen, when he says, now inmate, turn your head to the right, you need to move and position yourself on the other side. Now I told you in the wall search consideration video, sometimes when I had inmates on the wall and they're talking as a cover officer, I would step up and grab, I would grab the wrist and the elbow and hold it like I'm ready for an arm bar. And I would tell the inmate, keep your head to the left or the right, whichever way, away from me. This is what I would do for inmates that are starting to get antsy and out of control. Other officers weren't trained this. I was trained this in a police academy. See how my hands are? I'm not nearly like on my fingers. My hands, I'm standing like this, like on the cover. This is my position of a cover, my attention. I would tell him, keep your head to the left. And they start to move. I got a good grip. I'm ready to go down. I'm ready to help this cover officer. We're ready to go down. Cover officer knows if I'm on got his right arm, that means the inmate's gonna go to the right. You gotta start thinking, you gotta start reading each other's mind, communicate, practice this stuff with each other. Now, if you're not patting him down and you're just talking and the inmate's like this, he's not facing the wall, he's just standing, maybe hands behind his back and the officer's talking to him, you're still gonna be standing to the side. You're not standing, you know, side by side with the officer, you still need to be back. You still need to be back into the side. He addresses, he does whatever, you stand, you're like this, you're ready to go. Now, if I'm standing to the right side of the officer, 
That's the left side for the inmate. You know which way if he runs or the suspect, you're gonna run the other way because you're over here. That's okay, forcing that way. If, if the way, if there's a wall over that way and the best way for him to run is over this way, guess where? You stand on this side so you can force him to be the dead end of the wall. Think about your positioning. Cover officer, not talking, not engaging. He's there to cover, to protect the officer, to assist the officer if they need to go hands-on. Okay? Let's look over here at this marker. And here's a cell. And Frank and I were talking about cell searches. Turn a little bit here better. You we have to see this. This is a normal cell. This is the bunk, you know, double bunk, whatever. Triple bunks I've seen. Here's your uh, your bathroom, your little toilet and the sink, lockers, one locker, two locker. Some have a little chair here, some don't. Maybe that's a chair, maybe not. You want to go into a cell search, okay? Officers are going to go in one or two to search. Of course, no inmates inside, right? Inmates outside. You pat them down, you put them over here on a wall. In theory, the safest way to do this is you need three officers to be safe for a cell search. This why. So you got two inmates, one inmate, whatever, they come out, they're right here. You pat them down, they're clear. You're gonna tell them, keep your hands on the wall, feet shoulder width apart, or farther, however you set them up on the wall. Tell them they don't come off the wall, they stay there. So you need an officer to cover that, you need an officer in the search, and you need an officer in a doorway. Now the door, which way does the door go? The doors don't go in because there's no room. The doors are all, are usually right here on the side, the hinge by the toilet, right? So if a door is like this, it's going to swing around this way. So you want the door to swing over here, have the door open. Doors are very important. You got to think about doors. Have an officer in the doorway and an officer in here to search. That's the safest way. If this guy goes in and then he's searching, he's watching, this officer watching these two inmates and then all the other inmates that are around. That complicates things because then people get behind this officer. That makes it not safe. If you want two to search, have one here and one here, make it four. You'll be able to search faster with two. Say it's general population, you get the guys that are in here, you pat them down, you tell them, you know, go to the day room, go walk around, go whatever. We'll tell you when we're done. We're doing three cell searches today, random search. This is one of them. So then now you're done, you don't have this. You gotta have an officer in the door and an officer right here. The officer standing in the doorway, you can't just search and have nobody here. You don't let inmates, especially these guys, come to your doorway. You don't let them come in and start watching. That's a big safety thing. Yeah, reading people's body language is nice, but if you're the officer and the inmates like this and he's bugging and distracting you, three of them are gonna bum rush, run right behind, go in there and attack your buddy over here. He's gonna get the tar beat out of him before you can get there. Think about this. So if you're the one standing here by the door, maybe you need to stand here and instead of having this door flung all the way open, have the door be like this and your hand on the door. And if, if crowd starts to happen, something starts to get bad or wrong, you can always shut the door. What do you tell brand new officers when you're walking through general population? Hey, if things get bad, run in the cell and shut the door. We had a really, really bad assault against our officers one night, assault with weapons. And it was about going into search and they had stuff in there. And it was a gang and there was about five, six inmates in there. They wanted them to come out inmates refusing to come out. Now there were a sergeant and three officers in the dorm when this happened. Sergeant and two officers are making their way over to the cell. The one officer was got to the cell first. The other officer and sergeant were kind of close. The, the fourth officer was still by the doorway. He was trying to be a lookout for the whole situation. Inmate comes out of here and it just attacks the officer just like that. They never even got in. You gotta be very careful about inmates in a cell and coming out and how you talk to them. You're not gonna walk up and say, you blankety blank, cuss them out, get out, I'm searching your cell, you whatever. You're not gonna call that. Inmate so-and-so, I need you to step out. You gotta step out 
You don't need to be state dressed or anything. Whatever you got on, just come out. We'll patch it down. We're doing a quick cell search. Always tell them if you can. We got to do three a day. We're doing three cell searches right now real quick and we'll be out. Make it simple. De-escalate the situation before it happens. This guy's searching. So now once, once the pack search of these guys, the contact officer, he's going to be inside here. He's not contacting anybody. He's contacting property. The contact officer is out here dealing with the two inmates on the wall, or he's he's the one, if you're not controlling anybody, standing in the doorway. He's the contact because he's verbally contacting the rest of the inmates with instructions. You've got to use talk, you gotta use communication with each other. You gotta let each other know what we're doing. I'm searching in here and I tell them, hey, you know. Bed, bed's fine, nothing around the walls. I've checked all that. I'm gonna check the lockers and, and the toilet area and be done. Okay? I just did that clockwise. The beds, the walls, lockers, and toilet. That's counterclockwise. But I had it by a pattern and I explained it, what I've done and what I'm gonna do. So that helps him to know. Contact and cover. Plan this. As you walk to the, to the dorm, talk to each other. Who's gonna do what? Let each other know what the role is. Hey, we got three to search. You know, I'll search one, you search two. Or we've got four of us here. Two of us will search these two, then we'll switch. We'll, we'll be the cover and the contact out here while you guys search. Use communication. Communicate. Make this plan. Frank and I also talked about inmates walking down the walk, like going to the chow hall and he said we, we would like to do more searches on the way to mass movement. When I was on the CERT team, Lieutenant would tell us, depending on how many of the CERT guys were out there, you know, we controlled the CERT control to mass movement. So if the dorm's coming up, 40 to 40 to 62 guys, depending, you know, what was for dinner that day, what was for lunch, he'd come up, he'd tell us, okay, guys, uh, I want 10 people on the fence. We had fences guiding the sidewalks. So, cert guys would go down there. We'd stand there like this. You know, we'd be all get all puffed out. Be like, yeah, we're cert guys. So they start walking by. We're like, you grab the fence. You grab the fence. You grab the fence. We'd pick out 10 people. Okay, whether it's 10 or it's two, you get them on the fence, hands on the fence, spread your feet, don't move. You don't approach them. You don't start any business with them until the rest of the guys pass and get up past that fence to the next part. We call the octagon. And lieutenant or sergeant was up there, and they were the ones controlling. They were directing the movement to the chow hall and back. And there's a fence there. You want to wait till the, till the mass gets past you, and it's safe. Then we would go up systematically, depending on how many inmates, and pat search them, wand them if we needed to. Cert guys having little portable wands in the vest. Pull the wand out, check it over. Depends on what dorm. Got to be consistent, though. If we start wanding C dorm, we need to wand people in A and B and Y coming up also. See what I mean? Don't give people a reason to say you're picking on them because of whatever. What game they are, what race they are, you know, their sexual preference, all those things. Wand everybody, don't wand everybody. Now this is a good time when you get information, the officers come and tell you, hey, we got this, I heard this going on, I heard this going on. And, you know, they tell the sergeant, sergeant call lieutenant, lieutenant can call cert guys and say, hey, you know, my dorm guy is saying, hey, these guys have been, they've been boots laced up, they've been dressed up, something about to go down. So, that's a perfect time to start pulling five to ten people out of each dorm on the way to the town hall, wind them, pat them down. That way you're consistent. So think about that. The guy that's patting and winding is the contact officer. The cover officer is always over here. It's never one person for each inmate. It needs to be at least two officers per inmate. So you got four cert guys and 10 inmates, guess what? Four cert guys, you're only gonna search two people at a time. Two search, two are cover. Two search, two are cover. And the two you're searching, you wanna, okay, first guy, second guy, Just take to the left five feet. Separate these two from the other eight and then two at a time and then get them on the way. You see where I'm getting at? Communicate, contact and cover. Contact and cover. So you wanna start checking, finding weapons on the way to chow hall, you got problems in the chow hall, that's how you do it. 
coordinate with the sergeant, lieutenant, the cert guys, some other folks, whoever you can get, the more officers, the more you can check. You know, you got a cell set standing somewhere between the dorm and the chow hall. Use that physical check too, because the cell sense won't show the plastic shanks that are made from the trays, the food trays from the chow hall. The whole, some of these homemade shanks that I've seen and taken, they, they'll pass a metal detector. This will give you a chance, you know, also identifying cell phones to be passed or drugs to the inmates that work in the chow hall or not. So think about that, contact and cover. So basically, to sum it up, contact, you're the talker, you're in control of that, that encounter with the inmate. The cover guy, you're like a whole SWAT team built in one person. You're everything that the contact guy needs to have. You're the ears, the eyes, you're the physical help, and you can position yourself to enhance that. Your attention, your hands can enhance that. By doing everything right, you make this situation safer and more thorough of a search and more control of the incident. And the better you get at doing this, the less you have to actually communicate. If you work as a buddy and with the same officer all the time, you do this stuff, you'll be pros reading each other. The good cop, bad cop, I'll explain that. Something's going down and you separate a couple inmates or you got an inmate supposed to be something. You know, say Frank and I, this is dedicated to Frank in Arizona. Say Frank and I are working together and he got something going and he's talking and he's getting information and the inmate starts to clam up, starts to not be serious, clown around or starts to get agitated. Well, he, Frank's being a good cop, I'm going to be the opposite. I'm going to be like, come on, inmate, you want some of this stuff? We'll do this. We'll, you know, we'll get this confession out of you. We'll something. Hey, Frank, let's just do this. There's no cameras around. There's no something. Maybe you need to say something and hint to him. I need to play like I'm the bad guy. You know, come off of a movie, a bad movie. And then Frank's like, oh, no, we don't need to go all that way. The inmate's not like that. He's probably just upset. So Frank's playing good. He's playing nice. I'm playing mean over here. Frank's playing nice, he's talking to him, reassuring him, I'm playing mean, and then I'm going to step back. Okay, Frank, if you want it to be, be your way, we'll, we'll try that. I'll step back and disengage on purpose. I'm just taking like one or two small steps back, but it's the gesture I disengaged. And then it, Frank continues his conversation, tries to get out what information he needs or whatever to handle or resolve it. That's how you do the good cop, bad cop. You know, sometimes we talk about presence. You want to have presence. You have two officers stand up right, right there by the inmate, and you're saying this and saying this. You're going this back and forth. Sometimes the bad cop will win because that'll scare and intimidate the inmate, and they'll, they'll want to take a step back and say, look, here, I'll just tell you all this stuff. I don't want all this. I don't want no smoke, Sarge. That's what they tell me. Don't want no smoke. Sometimes the bad cop needs to prevail. The good cop will step back. And the bad cop's like, come on, hurry up, tell me, hurry up. And then he'll tell you the information that you need to know. And then that's it. You step back. Frank would step up, finish the conversation while I'm stepped back. You know, just a couple steps behind Frank. And then I would let him finish the conversation in a polite way. And we disengage and continue. And then we go investigate or whatever we need to. Think about this role playing. How can you help each other in the good cop and the bad cop? Let me tell you a funny story about a good cop, bad cop. Really quick, really quick. Inmate was misbehaving, got put in, in isolation. He's in a one man in the shower. And it was visitation day. I told this in another video. The inmate, the lieutenant told me his, his baby mama and his baby, it was like six, seven, eight months, something but little, drove five, six hours from South Georgia to North Georgia to come visit. They said, inmate so-and-so, he was just insubordinate, but we're not going to lock him down. We're not going to move him, you know, to segregation or anything. He'll return to GP. If she shows up for visitation, get him up there. He was brought down in the shower. He was yelling at the lieutenant this morning during breakfast. So we let him in there a little cooling off period. And I'm there with my good buddy, Will. And we... we he and I, we, we played a good cop, bad cop, 11 out of 12 hours a day, constant. And we controlled the things in the tier unit. 
And, and I said, well, we're, we're going to send him back before count. That way he'll, he's cleaned up and he's ready to go in case his visitor comes. I said, but I want to leave a lasting impression on him for yelling at our lieutenant. And Will says, what do you mean? I said, you just play with me. I said, we're going to do it. So I go up there and go to the shower and look in the window at him. He's looking. I said, it may so-and-so. I said, your visitor's here. I said, we can handle this two ways. You can apologize to the lieutenant. You can apologize to us, you know, lieutenant, after your visitation. You know, we'll take you right up. You'll understand, you know, you were wrong. You shouldn't be like that. I said, or I can punch the wall and punch the steel door on this bathroom shower get my hand all scratched up, maybe a little bloody. And then I'll go up to visitation and tell her, I'm sorry, he got out of control with Lieutenant this morning, got in a fight, I hit him a couple times, but he's locked down and he can't come see you. I'm sorry you drove all this way for nothing. And he said, you wouldn't do that, would you? Well, I'm playing the bad cop, obviously. Will's over here and he was like shaking his head no, like, no, Sarge, we don't need to do all that. We'll just take him up. And I was like, no. And I looked at him and I looked at Will and I looked at him and I said, well, nah. We're going to do it. I did the jackhammer on that door. Scratched my hands. I've got a couple little cuts on here because I'm hitting steel. And I held it out to him. I said, look. I said, I'm going to go tell her you acted up. We done whooped you this morning. She needs to go home. We both turned and walked. We went out to the sally port. About 12, 15 feet away. Stood there leaning against the wall. Listened to him scream and cry for about five minutes. She wasn't there. And then we come walking back up there and I knocked on the door and I said, it so-and-so. I said, she's not here yet. I wanted you to think about something. We're going to go back to your dorm. You're going to take a shower and clean up and look presentable. So when she does get here shortly, you'll be ready to go to visitation. So I just want to teach you a lesson. So we take him out and he cried, apologized all the way back down to the dorm he was from. I can't believe you did that. I said, Many reports from officers in the last two weeks, how you're insubordinate, you're yelling, you're cussing at officers, you're very disrespectful. I said, I'm, you learned a lesson today, didn't you? Because you know I'll go up there and tell her you can't come, you're locked down, and make her drive all the way back. Because you know I'm firm, fair, and consistent, the three things that are very important they teach in the academy. I said, but you know I'm going to be by the book. You get out of control, I'm going to lock you down and I'm going to sign you into my behavior unit, my tier one unit, which means you're not eligible to go to visitation anymore for 30 days that you're here locked down. I said, you know I do that. And he said, I know, I know, sorry. I'm sorry. He said, I'm going to go by. He did go by and tell the lieutenant he was sorry. He told us he was sorry. And you know what? He never gave the officers a problem again. That's a good example how a good cop, bad cop, and a little creativity worked out. All I had to do is hit the door and tell him I was going to, you know, what I was going to tell him. Called his bluff. And went back and said, oh, I just wanted to teach you something. No disciplinary report today. No nothing. I wanted you to learn something. He thanked me for that. And it was all good. Contact. You talk. You contact. You search. You control. Cover. You move your body constantly to keep your officer safe from the inmate and to assist your officer in any way possible. Contact and cover. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll talk again. Frank's gave me three or four more ideas, uh, videos I'm going to make in the very near future. Be safe, Frank. Talk to you soon.